Welcome to Topic A, everyone. I'm your host, Gary Perna. This week on Topic A, I'm joined by State Representative Jerry Knowles of the 124th District out of Schuylkill County. We're going to talk about one of the biggest bills to hit the Pennsylvania State House, and it was sponsored by this guy right here to reduce the size of the house. We'll talk all about that, plus some other uh, going-ons in Harrisburg and what you can expect in 2016. Stay with us. All Care Home Care, providing quality in home care since 1986. Call and see how their team of licensed physical therapists, skilled nurses, speech, and occupational therapists can provide you with exceptional service in the comfort of your own home. They also offer dietitian, home health aid, and medical social worker services. You have a choice in your health care. For safe, friendly, qualified care, call All Care Home Care today and let their team begin taking care of you and your loved ones. The Beer Garage, 202 East Diamond Avenue in Hazleton. More than just beer, coffee, all sizes, only $1. Get your lottery tickets here, too. Stop in today, The Beer Garage in Hazleton. Hello, I'm Paul Esposito Jr. from Victoria's Candies. My family has been serving the Hazleton and surrounding areas since 1934. Our secret family recipes and time-tested techniques of making fine candy have made Victoria's Candies your choice for nearly four generations. We specialize in Easter baskets and hollow-filled eggs, and we make our own chocolate molds, like the Easter Bunny, the Last Supper, the Cross, an iPod, a cell phone, or a guitar, just to name a few. Shop where the Easter Bunny shop, Victoria's Candies. Welcome back to Topic A, everyone, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Representative Knowles once again. It's the third time I've had you up on the show. Um, we could be the, the Jerry and Gary show. Uh, maybe we could start that here monthly or something. That would be fine. <laughs> that would be, I, I would certainly enjoy that, Gary. It's always a pleasure to be here. Uh, you guys always make people feel very welcome. Oh, it, we try here, and you know, I, I like having you on the show because um, y you've done a, a lot in, in the time that you've been in the House, not to mention the time you were commissioner, you were a uh, council in, in Tamaqua, you know, long, long, long uh, list of, of great things that you've accomplished in your time. And um, continuing to go forward with a history-making bill and um, kind of one that you've picked up mm -hmm. uh, to carry on, but House Bill 153 to reduce the size of the State House of Representatives um, not necessarily a full cost saving measure there is some some cost savings but to get down the the hustle and bustle the 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 arguing the, the yelling the screaming with this very large house and you know what what was your drive behind to keep this going well my, my drive behind it was that uh anyone who uh anyone who is on the house floor or mm -hmm. who sees the house floor will agree that at times it can be very chaotic you're talking about 203 people and that's a lot of mm -hmm. people to try to uh, to work with and and to build compromise. Uh, I, if you don't mind, I'd just like to give a little bit of the history mm -hmm. of the House of Representatives, and I'm going to kind of go quickly. But in 1682, there were 42 members, and then in the early 1700s, it dropped from 42 down to 24. And then there was a steady increase. It went up to 76, uh, and it, I think that was around the year 1776. Mm -hmm. Well, then they created the Senate in 1790, and the Constitution said that uh, it could be no smaller than a quarter or no larger than one-third the size of the House. Mm -hmm. So in 1857, the Constitution was amended to set 100 as a limit, 
In 1870, the, the Constitution increased the Senate from 33 members to 50 and set the House at a minimum of 200. And then it took uh, until 1885 for the House to reach 100 members. Uh, and then uh, the, the House then peaked. The all-time high was in uh, from 1955 through 1973. There were 210 members. And uh, that brings us up to the Constitution. It was amended to set the number of House members mm -hmm. to 2003. And it's kind of interesting. Uh, everybody says, where did they come up with the number of 203? Well, in those days when they were putting the districts mm -hmm. together, they didn't have computers. They didn't. It wasn't the idea of pushing a, a button and all these numbers. But mm -hmm. It was actually done manually. Right. So what happened was uh, when they were doing this work, when they were putting together uh, the districts, they actually got done and they counted and there were 203. <laughs> and there were supposed to be 201. And basically they said, we're tired, <laughs> we're going to bed. Yeah. And they left it at 203. But I... Uh, I, I always thought that that was uh, that was kind of interesting because we had a, there was a symposium in in, uh, in Harrisburg last year and one of the folks that worked on uh, this back uh, during the '60s is is the guy who told us that story. And, and you know th this is it's kind of a unique bill because um, by putting this on the floor um, and, and which which it passed um, and it has passed through the Senate so th this is kind of you know, the farthest it has gotten in recent history um, to decrease the size uh, of the House. But you also got to think about it uh, when it passed. Are there some state representative out there going, well, geez, maybe maybe I just lost my job? You know, so, um, and like you said before, this is not an easy thing to do. Our forefathers made this very difficult to change anything uh, for a good reason, though, too. So this is only probably step one of a four or five step process that we have to go through. And let's talk a little bit about that, Gary. I mean, the longer I'm involved in government, the more I realize the, the, our forefathers were bright people. Uh, they worked very hard to get the product that they got. Mm -hmm. And they were very happy with that product. They thought it was a good product. So they made certain that if we were gonna make any dramatic changes, that it would not be uh, it would not be easy, and uh, I mean even when even when we talk about legislation, uh, it's 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 a, it's a it's a grueling process, and that's the way it's meant to be. Our mm -hmm. forefathers wanted to be certain that if we're going to enact laws, that we're certain that the majority of people want it, and uh, particularly when we're talking about the Constitution. Mm -hmm. I mean, recognize that it passed the House, it went over to the Senate, and it then passed in the Senate. There were no amendments, mm -hmm. so therefore uh, it, it's done. Uh, for this session, it is done. So now what has to happen is two newspapers in every county. Mm -hmm. uh, there, will be, uh, there will be material put in there explaining to people what we're trying to do, and then that will give people the opportunity to give feedback to their senators and their legislators. So then the next session, it has to pass again in the House, as well as the Senate. Okay. It's got to be the exact same legislation. Okay. Again, after that, it goes into the newspapers, and then uh, it goes to the voters. And I think that's the most important part about this whole process. The voters of Pennsylvania mm -hmm. will make the decision. There will be a referendum on the ballot, and at that time they will make a decision as to whether they want to see it continue at 203 or they want it to be at 151. Okay. So, and everybody says, well, originally, and this legislation was, uh, it, it was the, the prime sponsor in the past was Speaker, former Speaker Sam Smith. Mm -hmm. And they called it House Bill 153 because they were talking about it being reduced to 50 to 153, but then uh, it was amended in the State Government Committee of the House because it was amended to 151, and the thought process was that we would correct the mistake that was made before. <laughs> right, right, all those years ago. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's going down to 151 if the voters decide that's what they want. 
And, and this is, you know, unique because now it was passed right in January of, of 2016. Um, this is an election year for some of the, the seats in the House. So once we get through this and then they're sworn in January, this can be put on again in 2017 to be voted on. Um, and then it can go out on a referendum in the 17 primary, there's 17 general, somewhere in there. So this could really be done within the next year uh, for, uh, you know, before 2018 comes around. Well, it, the, the goal is, the goal is to get it done before 2020. Okay. Because in 2020, <coughs> we will do re reapportionment right. once again. And at that time, as the state is reapportioned, it would be reapportioned with districts uh, that would be somewhere in the area of 80, I think it's 84,000 as opposed to 62.5, it'd be somewhere 83, 84,000, okay. so that each district would be around that number and there would be 151 districts. Okay, all right, we're gonna take a short break. Stay with us here on Topic A. We'll be right back with more. Walk into the region's most trusted health network. Boy, I hope I win tonight. Why? It's tax time and I have to get my taxes done. Well, why don't you try Honest Abe's tax service? The most you'll pay is $75 to $125. They say don't stress, pay less. Hmm, what's that name again? Honest Abe's Business and Tax Service. 310 South Church Street, Hazelton, 570-861-8297. WYLN TV 35 has strong ties to the community as evident in its commitment to important causes like the American Cancer Society and Helping Hand Society tilt funds. WYLN's commitment to Northeastern Pennsylvania continues with a broadcast of Hazelton's Fun Fest Parade and both the Christmas and St. Patrick's Day parades in Wilkesbury. In the summer, we broadcast the Weatherly and Giants of Spare Hill Flag, and throughout the year, we provide important community services through the broadcast of town meetings, school board meetings, election night coverage, and other events. WYLN, we're your local network. Combined Insurance makes it easy to protect you and your loved ones by paying cash directly to you when you need it most. Whether you're looking for accident and sickness, disability, or life coverage, Combined Insurance has a policy to meet your needs and fit your budget. Call John Ravello, 570-499-0504 for an appointment to help determine the best coverage for you. That's John Ravello, 570-499-0504. We're expanding. WYLN News has a median opening for a news reporter and anchor, a multimedia journalist. This is an evening position, a college degree or comparable work experience required. Please send resumes and demo reels to Ann Gamling, News Director, 1057 East 10th Street, Hazleton, Pennsylvania, 18201, or by email, news at wyltv.com. Get your green on and join us for the Wilkes-Barre St. Patrick's Day Parade Sunday, March 13th, live on WYLN TV 35. Thousands of spectators, vintage vehicles, local talent, floats, marching bands, and more. The Wilkes-Barre St. Patrick's Day Parade, March 13th, live on WYLN TV 35. We're your local network. All right, and welcome back, everyone. And we're continuing our discussion about House Bill 153 to reduce the size of the State House here in Pennsylvania uh, from 203 down to 151. Uh, and, and Jerry, you know, Pennsylvania's um, House is the largest uh, full-time legislative body uh, in, in the country, only to be uh, outbeaten by uh, New Hampshire, who's only part-time. Right. Yeah, they're, they're somewhere in the area of 424 members. Uh, that'd be 424. And we are indeed the, uh, the largest mm -hmm. full-time legislature in, in the country. 
and, and you know it has to say something because um, you know Pennsylvania is is pretty big um, but you know it's it's not as big as some other states in New York I think is a little bit bigger than us in California and Texas but I think we have a 203 people in the house working with us to um, you know to work on laws and passing uh, stuff like that but hey, does it get bogged down or it takes so long for something to reach the floor until it gets out of uh, committees where you have all these different people you know this will kind of correct some of that and, and, and make government work a little bit more efficiently absolutely uh, the truth of the matter is that several people have said to me is it all about saving money it's always good when you can make government smaller and save money but you're talking about 10 million to 15 million dollars to me more importantly I believe that with the smaller legislature I, I think there can be better discussion I think there can be clearer debate mm -hmm. and I also think that there can be uh, it just seems to work out better in terms of coming to a compromise you know you had talked about uh, when we were off camera you had talked about the size and and we talked a little bit about 151 now uh, and and when I talked to Speaker Smith he explained mm -hmm. to me that there was no magic number it was just uh, you know I think the decision may have been based on if you look at other states mm -hmm. now the state that I look at which to me it's a, it's a there's about 12 million people in the state of Ohio there's around 13 million in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania the state of Ohio has 33 senators we have 50 mm -hmm. uh, the House of Representatives they have 99 and we have 203 so we would be we, we'd be going to 151 currently we're four to one mm -hmm. there are four legislators four state legislators state representatives for every senator this would take it to a three to one right. ratio from from the uh, it would mm -hmm. still be 50 to the uh, to the 151 and you know you talked about the cost savings and, and you look at Harrisburg and all the the office buildings and you look at all the the employees and you look at that but you know, in, in retrospect, when you're looking at it too, say, all right, well, if a state representative is gaining, uh, you know, 30 or 40 more thousand constituents, you're going to need another office somewhere. So necessarily people go, oh, my God, are these people going to be out of jobs? That's not necessarily true because, no. you know, you're still going to need to have representation in, in areas and, and say, you know, maybe you represent, you know, say all of Schuylkill County, maybe all of Carbon County, you know, j just throwing a, a what if out there. You're going to need offices in maybe two parts of Schuylkill County and two parts of Carbon County so everyone can get to a place and, and and you can hear from the constituents so you know where you are saving you know 12 or 13 million dollars uh, in the scheme of, of what our budget is even though we don't have a budget right now in Pennsylvania <laughs> but you know in the scheme of things it's a it's a small fraction but it's still a cost savings uh, for the people and it's a way to make government work better well you know the other thing uh, that, that I think is important is that when I went through my last couple of terms, mm -hmm. as we came to the end, uh, as we came to the end of, like in into the uh, into 2010, I was actually uh, I was actually representing probably closer to 75,000 people uh, because of the growth. Mm -hmm. you know, that was before they did this last redistricting. Yeah. Okay, I was representing somewhere around 75,000. The average district was somewhere around 62,000. So my point is, I really couldn't tell the difference. Mm -hmm. I really couldn't tell the difference because when you think about it, uh, I mean, with technology, uh, you've got your iPhones and, mm -hmm. and you've got your email, you've got your iPads, you've got all this <laughs> right. electronic equipment, which is uh, one way people communicate. And uh, you know, we, uh, quite honestly, I share an office in Tamaqua with Senator Argo. Mm -hmm. It's my primary office, but he shares that with right. me. We share an office uh, down in Hamburg, mm -hmm. which is his office, but we share that office. And I mean, I, I was down in the Berks County area today. And uh, the point is that we, uh, we do everything in our power to, uh, to, to meet with people. Right. And right. If, if somebody calls me and they say, hey, look, I, I'm really, I can't get out of the house. I'd really like to talk to you. We've already driven to their house right. and sat in their living room and, and, and talked about issues and problems. So, you know, I think that uh, with, with technology the mm -hmm. way it is, uh, I, I just don't see this as being a big deal. I mean, right. we, I, I, listen, 
the chances of somebody, whether it be 80, you know, 84,000 or 62,000, the chances of someone sitting and having a face-to-face with me right. are no different. Right. We have town hall meetings. We have legislative breakfast. We do all kinds of activities, and we invite people to, and they have an opportunity to come in and talk. Right. Now, they, you know, some people would – we have our telephone town hall meetings, and some people would rather go that route. But I think the important thing is that we as legislators have to be certain – that if somebody wants to talk to us, that they mm-hmm. get that opportunity, whether it be right. on the telephone, whether it be face to face, we need to make ourselves available. Because right. everybody, not not every one of those eighty-four or sixty-two thousand want to talk to you. Right, well, and, that, and that's all, you know, and also something else. But uh, quickly, I want to wrap up our, our discussion on Bill One Fifty Three. Um, so right now, it passed the House and the Senate with overwhelming numbers. Uh, too, yeah, which yeah, was they, great. The, the House was one thirty-nine to fifty-six. The Senate was 43 to 6, and that, that's pretty nice vote. It's pretty sizable vote. And, and, and that's pretty good. So this now has to wait. It'll have to go through another legislative uh, session. So uh, I'll, be, I'll be reintroducing it. If everything goes well, I'll be reintroducing it in January. This will be one of the first things that I do out of the walk. Is and that, that will be good. And quickly, I, I want to just um, talk to you uh, about the budget. I've talked to everyone about it so far. Um, you know, we're going seven months uh, without, a, without a, a budget in place. We're already looking at the next budget. Yeah. Um, you know, your thoughts on, on what's going on right now in Harrisburg? Well, this governor is like, uh, I, I've never seen anything, anything like it. I, I mean, uh, you know, he, when he campaigned, he, he talked about the fact that he was going to be a new and different gov- governor. And I, I really thought that coming from a business background, mm-hmm. I thought that he would be much different than he is. I, I'm somewhat disappointed. I mean, he talks about working together. He talks about compromise. And, and then, he, you know, he, he, then he uses comments like, mm-hmm. this is stupid and that's dumb. And, and that, that nobody wants to hear that a product right. that they did is stupid or dumb. Uh, and then he, he, he runs negative ads on, uh, he, he sends out negative mailers about mm-hmm. legislators. He runs uh, negative uh, half-truth ads on television. And uh, that doesn't sit well with people. I mean, right. we, we want to we work with him, but, but he needs to realize, he needs to get into his head that they're, listen, People sometimes are offended by being mm-hmm. called politicians. Those of us that run for office, we're politicians. Right. Once you get elected, you've got to govern. Mm-hmm. And that's where I think he has failed the people. He's made promises to people, uh, particularly some, some of the people, some of the union people, he's mm-hmm. made promises, and he's not able to deliver those. You know, he's not the king of Pennsylvania. He's the governor of Pennsylvania. And, I, I mean... 87% of the budget is right. done. Right. 13% of the budget needs to get done, and we need to sit down, and we need to get that done. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully we can work on that. We'll be right back. Stay with us. If you're not in danger and you see a crime, text 274-637-274-637. Now, helping to solve or prevent the crime is just a text away. Text my tips to the word crimes and let the law help you. SJ Kowalski is your Mitsubishi Diamond Contractor. They can install a Mitsubishi Electric, Mr. Slim ductless heating and cooling system. Mr. Slim systems are designed to make any living space in your home inviting. You can have a different temperature control for every room in your home. The money-saving technology can save you 25 to 50 percent on your heating bill. For Mitsubishi, Renai, and trained comfort specialists, call SJ Kowalski at 570-455-2600. For over 25 years, Whitetail Preserve Shooting Range, 118 Boulevard Road, Bloomsburg, has provided professionally designed skeet, trap, and sporting clay fields. All stations are handicapped accessible with resident NRA certified shooting instructors on site. There are packages available to fit anyone's budget, restaurant, and catering on site. Our facility is also available for weddings, business meetings, bachelor, and private parties. Call 570-384-2314.
Watch Off the Beaten Path on WYLN TV 35 and discover the Pennsylvania you never knew existed. All right, welcome back to Top Again. I got about four minutes into the show, uh, Jerry. So uh, quickly, I uh, want to just a little bit more on the budget. Um, you know, we're at a point now where we're coming into where the governor has to introduce his next budget when we don't even have a budget now to deal with. Um, and, you know, the House passed the budget in June with increasing in spending that the governor wanted for. Not exactly what he wanted, but he got more in education, he, he got more money to play with, uh, but still wasn't happy with it. And, you know, where does the compromise lay? Well, you know, you, you bring up a good point, Gary. The, the, the most disappointing part is that we indeed did pass a budget, constitutional budget, back in June. Uh, it was a, a billion dollars in additional spending. Mm -hmm. It was a 3.5, 3.6% 3 increase in spending. Anybody that runs a home would tell you that that is logical. Now, unlike governors before him, he chose to veto uh, the entire budget. He could have gone in and he could have signed the budget and then he could have blue lined certain things that he wasn't happy with. Uh, so then what happens is most recently mm -hmm. he did exactly what he could have done back in June. So I, I mean he put, uh, he put our, our schools, he put our social services, he put so many people in, in, mm -hmm. in uh, just, it was, it was tension. People were upset, schools were upset. Rape crisis centers were upset. Uh, you know, all of the various activities that are funded by the state. And, and, and it, the most disturbing thing is what he did recently, mm -hmm. he could have done back in June. Right. And he could have prevented from putting people through that, that, that terrible situation. Yeah, and you know what, uh, 41%, uh, you told me, that it, of the budget goes to education, 39 to welfare. You know, th these were places that were hit the hardest, however, they get the most out of the state budget, and still the governor's not happy with the amount of money uh, that was secured for them. Well, the, and then I'm understanding, and I read this in the paper, that, that now uh, he's going to come back uh, in the next budget, and I think the number was $300 million more. So On top of the $400 uh, million he asked four, for. Yeah, so, I mean, that's – when does it end? You know, people can you – know, I, I, I keep thinking about the people out there mm -hmm. that are trying to pay property taxes and people that are living on fixed incomes. And, uh, you know, all of the people that I represent have spoken loud and clear. And that is, you take enough of our money, mm -hmm. you have a responsibility to decide where that money can best be spent. But, uh, you know, don't, don't take any more money out of my pocket. I'd be remiss to ask you real quickly, I got a minute left, property tax reform, something that needs to be worked on. Absolutely. Uh, Senator Argyle has put uh, a lot of time and effort. He and, he and uh, Representative Jim Cox from Berks County. You know, uh, the people that I represent just scratch their heads and say, what is it? Mm -hmm. what, what, yeah. Unfortunately, uh, it, it is such a big issue in Berks, in Schuylkill, in Luzerne, uh, in, in Carbon. Uh, it, it's just such a major issue. But yet there are areas of the mm -hmm. state that it's just not that big a deal uh, right. to some of those people. So I always tell people when they call me, you're preaching to the choir. You need to talk to your relatives in other areas of the state who have other representatives. Right. And then you check and see if they're on board and if they're not on board, you need to talk to them so that we can get to that magic number in the House okay. and in the Senate and we can uh, get it before the governor to sign. All right. Well, Jerry, we're out of time. Thank you so much for coming up and talking. You're welcome back anytime. I will. You just call and I'll be here. <laughs> I, I truly enjoy this. I, I appreciate what you guys do here in keeping, in keeping the people that I represent uh, informed. You guys do a great job. All right, Jerry. Thanks so much. Thanks for tuning in the topic, everyone. Remember, this is where the community comes to talk. We'll catch you next time. See you later. <laughs>